Hello, so here we are again on our Sundays with Giovanni series. This is number three, episode number three. And I'm here in Santa Barbara with Giovanni, and we have done, the first one was on the Shen, the last one was on Gui, and today I have an interesting question I'm going to ask Giovanni. And um, it's because I also teach craniosacral, um, craniosacral therapy. I teach a retreat where we blend Chinese medicine principles with craniosacral and osteopathic principles. And I've been asked a lot about what is the midline, the functional midline. And I thought, what is that in Chinese medicine? So I thought, who better than to take it to the master and ask Giovanni, <laughs> what is the functional midline? What is a midline in Chinese medicine? And to do that, we actually went to his book, The Channel for <coughs> Acupuncture, and Giovanni started to analyze some things that we will discover that are extremely interesting. Thank you, Susan. Um, before I answer your question about the do and the ren in relation to the midline, your question actually brought up something else for me, which I found interesting, when you used the word osteopathic. Mm. Okay. And the extraordinary vessels or extra meridians can be used as like a kind of acupuncture osteopathy. Uh, for example, the yin chao mei and the yang chao mei mm -hmm. harmonize left and right. So if yes. you have one leg, for example, longer than the other, <laughs> from okay. the osteopathic point of view, yes. you can use the yin chao or the yang chao to harmonize the harmonize left and right. So this is fascinating. It's like an osteopathy treatment. Wow. And the Dume, of course, controls the spine. So it can treat any osteopathic problems of the spine. And the Dume in our regular lay translation is governing The governing vessel, vessel yes. In my lectures, I don't translate Chinese terms. So I call the Dume, Dume. In my books, it will be the governing vessel. <coughs> But I think everyone knows what the Dume is, right? Not some of the people listening to no. this. Okay. They're, they're going to be brand new. Imagine some of them are brand new to Okay, Chinese so medicine. the Dume is what most people will call the governing vessel, which is a good translation because Du, the word Du, does mean to govern. And it's called that because it governs all the young channels. So going back to what I was saying about an osteopathic use of the extra meridians, the experiments are very interesting because they can be used in a very profound way to treat your constitution and your gene at a very profound, deep level. But they can also be used in a completely different way, like an osteopathic treatment for your bones. So this is very interesting. I'm going to interrupt you for a second. Um, there's different forms of osteopathy um, here, and I'm sure in England where we've got the more biomechanical osteopathy, which is working specifically with bones and, and legs and vertebra and the brain, the cranial bones. And then we have the biodynamic cranial, craniosacral or cranial osteopathy, which is working on that deeper spiritual yeah. level. And isn't another word for eight extra meridians? Yes. So a ancestral? So it would be it? both, yeah. Ancestral... Uh, I mean, that's Not what I used really. To teach, but uh, the French in the French school they call them ancestors. So you can call them that because they do influence your constitution. And, and I used to teach that in the olden days, but I'm way out of date now. They do so. influence your constitution yes. and your gene, but mm -hmm. there is no such Chinese word okay. that calls them ancestral. But okay. you can. Okay. So so I interrupted you because you're going back now into these deeper levels of what. Um, those so what you said mean. about the two types of osteopathy. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with what I just said, that yes. you can use the extra meridians at a very deep, profound level, or as a form of osteopathy to realign the bones and yeah. the, the vertebrae. Amazing. So see how ancient Chinese medicine from 2,000 years ago, those principles are completely being validated by modern research, mm -hmm. really. Because mm -hmm. osteopathy is not that old, it's since what, 1870s. So yeah, yes, about that. Someone in the United States. Yeah, right? Andrew yeah. Taylor Still. Yeah. And he got that by sensing nature and his hands on bodies, and he felt that there was a rhythm that he noticed was very powerful. And then they talk about this midline as starting at the tail and moving up to the head. 
and it comes, uh, they've tracked it way back, research in embryology, that there's this force that moves all the way up. That's clearly the domain. I mean, it's, yes. I mean, it's absolutely the domain. Isn't it starts it? from the one, from the tip of the coccyx and goes to the head, into the brain, yes. and ends here. And in answer to your question about the midline, that's clearly the Dume and Reme of Chinese medicine. Yes. They're perfectly complementary, hence the name. Uh, du means to govern, because it governs all the young. And Ren actually does not mean conception, but it means to direct. I translate it as directing vessel, which is perfectly symmetrical and complementary with the Dume. So the Du governs the young, mm -hmm. the Ren directs the yin, governs all the yin, which it very much, which it definitely does. And that's why the ren is in the front, which is yin, mm -hmm. and the do is in the back, which yeah. is yang. Fascinating. And, and the yin, the, the ren, governs the sea of yin, doesn't it? The sea of yin, yes. The, the sea of yin. The do governs the, the sea of yang. Yeah. If you do, if you use do four, for example, which is called Ming Man, you affect all the yang channels, the whole, you tonify the yang of all the channels. So do four is, is level with the hip at the back, on the spine. Between the second and the third lumbar vertebra. The second and third. Level, level. no, Dumo is in, in, on, the spine. on the spine itself, between yes. two and three. And, and my simple translation would be what? Fire gate? Gate of fire? Okay. You can translate it in many ways. I use the word, uh, the gate of vitality. Gate of vitality. Because there's uh, Ming, the word Ming can be yeah. translated in so many ways. It can be destiny as well. Destiny's gate, huh? Vitality. <laughs> Bensky vitality. uses the word. I used to actually adopted Bensky's translation of the gate of vitality. Gate of vitality. But as I said in my lectures, I don't translate terms and I keep the Chinese name, the Ming Men. Men means door. The door so of the Ming, whatever that Ming is. Mm -hmm. Destiny or vitality, the, the yang of the mm -hmm. body, the fire of the body. Okay. So if the yang that do meridian is governing the energy in the yang way. And, and that's what's in the back. On the back. And the ren. The ren is in the front and it goes to very important points down here in the dantian. The dantian. Especially ren four. And it governs all the yin. It's uh, very much used to nourish all the yin channels. For example, REN4 would nourish the yin of liver, spleen, kidneys, heart, most organs. So REN4 is midway approximately between the pubic bone and the umbilicus. And the umbilicus, yes. And it's the si chi hai. No, chi hai is REN6. REN6 is chi hai. REN4 is guan yuan. Guan yuan, yes. Which is uh, the gate to the UN, to the origin. To the origin yeah. of the Which UN. The ori what is the origin? The origin is our constitution when we're conception, the UN. That's the origin. So here's what's fascinating. So when um, in modern embryology, you know, that with all the research, and there's a guy, I think he's German, called Blechschmidt, who's done a ton of research on this. So they talk about the embryological forces that, that grow us, that create a midline around, gosh, 14 to 19 days after conception, mm -hmm. and it's called the primitive streak, and yeah. then the notochord forms around I it. I think that will be the Chiang Mai. That could be the Chiang Mai. And then we've got the Yuan Shi, so it's the origin, that yes. original energy that grows yes. all the way, and the Chinese tracked this. That's what's so amazing. 2,000 years ago? I definitely think, although Chinese books do not say this, mm -hmm. but I do think that the extra meridians or extraordinary vessels are formed very early in the embryo before the main channels. Oh, oh okay. The eight extra, yes. before yeah. the main channels. It's like they shape the embryo. It's like, imagine you have an egg, okay? Which is the top and the bottom? <laughs> Either one can be top or bottom, which is yeah. left and right. Either one could be. Mm -hmm. And the extra meridians shape that egg. Like the dime is in the middle. Yes. So that determines what's top and what's bottom. Mm -hmm. Yin, where, yin Chao and Yang Chao are on the side. They determine which is left and which is right. Mm 
-hmm. And the do and ren determine which is the front and which is the back. Yes. Which is the front of the egg. It's impossible to tell, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But if you have the ren and the du mei, you know which is the front and the back. Yes. And the chu mei, where is the chu mei? Is that what you call the pre It's inside the egg. It's inside. It's, imagine a line inside the egg, in the middle. In the so that would be the primitive street that's the going The vortex, through, yes. which is the beginning of all the other seven. Wait, it is the Chiang Mai happen first, are you saying? I mean, it, it, no. It does, Chiang As Chiang I said, Chinese yes. books don't say any no. of this. No. Um, and Li Shijian, when he lists the order, uh, the, when he lists the extra meridians, I don't know whether the listing has any meaning, but it starts with the Yang Wei and the Yin Wei. There will be heaven and earth, which is rather strange, that but that's how it starts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, you said something very interesting about the translation of Ren Mai. Yeah, that it's that in, it's not what we what I used to teach, you know, which is so out of date now. Conception vessel. It's actually you call it directive vessel. I call it directing. directing. It could be called something else. I mean, but it's. Symmetrical component to the do or to the governing of do. Yes. So there's a balance of the yang and the governing and the directing of the yin. But the important thing is that the Chinese character for ren in ren mei is not conception. Yes, so they got it wrong. It is whoever to direct. Or yeah. to so whoever translated it in the early days, yes, so maybe uh, from the Vietnamese acupuncture maybe or Vietnamese the French. Maybe Vietnamese or French. Yeah, it must yes. be in French or Vietnamese because. In those times, there were no English books. No, so generations of us learned it wrong, and it's actually the directing. Of parable. course, it is wrong, but the God, the remake does influence conception. So yes, yes, yes. But it does influence many other things. Yes, and it does. Some some sources say it begins in the uterus, goes down to the perineum, and then goes up. Yeah, they the all go down to the perineum. All three. They of all them. go to the perineum. But all three of them. Chumai, Remai, and, and Dumai are the three main ones. They are the beginning. They are the beginning, and then the energy moves up to the head. Du, yes, Dumai, yes. Remai, and Chumai. Yes. They all start somewhere here, and different authors have different uh, versions. Yes. Some say it starts between the kidneys, yeah. in the kidneys, in the uterus, which would beg the question, when does it start in man? Yeah, where does it? <laughs> where does it? Have you figured that out? Well, I, th I think they start between the kidneys. Okay, you do. Okay. Another version is they start from rent three. Okay. So they start somewhere there in the Dantian, whatever yeah. it is. They're there, they start there. Somewhere down below. And in women, they obviously go through the uterus. Yes. Obviously. Yes. And then they all emerge from rent one. All three of them do rent and chew. And then they diverge. The ren is in the front, the du is in the back, and the chung is inside. Yeah. There was a fascinating uh, herbal treatment for prostate problems uh, using a bath, sitting in a bath with the herbs. Mm -hmm. The reason for doing that is that the herbs go through ren one mm -hmm. and they influence the du, ren, and chung. <laughs> so it's very efficient treatment. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But it's a very interesting treatment that is based on this idea. The idea is actually in Rishi Jen, that all three go down to Ren 1. Mm -hmm. Du, Ren and Chung are three branches of the same vessel. Okay, so when Li Shi Jen talks about the Ren being the anterior um, flow and the Du being the posterior and that they combine yes. and they're inseparable. Yes. He's not talking about the Chung there, is he? No, there are two different viewpoints. Okay. <laughs> All three of them start somewhere there from the Dantian and go to Ren 1. <coughs> but on the other hand, the Du and Ren are more closely connected. Yes, as, as kind of bookends. They're like a circle, basically, half yin and half yang. Okay. They both start from Ren they both start from the kidneys. They both go to Ren 1. Crucially, they both go to the heart, okay. and they both end somewhere here, the red yes. there, and the do there, and they connect inside here. Yes. That's why kissing is very good for you. Ah, <laughs> that's a great tip to take away today. Because it connects do and ren. Ah. 
It's true. That's is what that the Taoists. Commonly, that's what the Taoists. No, 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 I didn't make it up. The Taoists. I thought you made it up. <laughs> <laughs> the Taoist uh, sexual manuals say really? that. Really? Yeah. Okay, because of its kissing it's connects the do and the ren. And these are really important points. Yeah. Yes. So the ease is the flow and the do and ren. Yes. Okay. And Lisha Jen says they're like a circle. They look like two, but they're one. Or they look like one, but they're two. Mm -hmm. They're like inseparable, like midday and midnight. Yes. Okay. So we've got, just to recap, we've got the meridians flow. They come through the heart. They come up here. Kissing is really good. And it seems like this <laughs> opens up the shen yes. into the face. So the ren and the do. The do may go through the form. brain anyway. Yes. Which is where the shen is. Yes. Is the shen in the brain or in the heart? It well. Both. Both. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> so here's, here's something very interesting then, the, the next piece for me, is, um, is it okay if, I, uh, if we keep going on this? Yes, yes, yes. So here in the biodynamic cranial osteopathy, we, we've got the midline that flows, and it's described in cranial osteopathy, or embryology, as this force. And it's very new information for me today that you're talking this force. This, the, the embryological forces mm -hmm. that grow the embryo. And then I'm keeping on this track because I'm um, connecting now with what you're saying. And, and help us regenerate as adults and keep us in that very healthy flow when we get back in touch. So I'm fascinated. One that the Renmai is now called new for me, directing because it's almost like that directing vessel, the mm -hmm. directing energy, directs this midline <coughs> to keep us flowing. And as practitioners in biodynamic cranial sacral, we need to have our, I'm s sitting up straighter, we need to have our midlines clear and flowing so that we can then be better present for our patients. And you've talked about this, I think it was last episode, about the intention of the practitioner, the acupuncturist, mm -hmm. is vital. That's why we can't yes, do blind yes. studies. If the intention is really clear, you're talking about the same thing, I yes, think. Yes, yeah? yes. I think what you're talking about is uh, energy rising is very much connected to Guan Yuan, the Ren Fo point, Ren, which is a that, that major, good. major point, in my opinion. I, I agree. Uh, I, agree. I think that's where the Dan Tian is. I think that's the Dan Tian. There's Ren Fo more than Ren Six. Or yeah, more than Ren Six. Well, it's such opinion. a big area, isn't it? Ren Fo is Guan Yuan, is the gate to the Yuan, the gate to the origin. I mean, that says yes. it all. Yes, it does. Yeah. The gate to the, I like to call it the magnet point because it's yes. so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. It's really magnetic and vibrant. And Going back briefly to what you were saying about the symmetry of the Du and Ren and like being like midday, midnight. Yeah. It, it makes for great points combinations combining the Du and Ren. Mm -hmm. because it kind of stimulates that movement, that circular movement so from the kidneys to the brain, back to the kidneys. Does it balance or does it increase the movement? Is it what Balance, does it do? I would say. Oh. Increase it as well, yes. All mm -hmm. balance. Example, do 24 and REN 15. Do and REN. Those are some of your favorite points. Favorite points. And so also two three points, do, f do, f do 24, REN 15 and REN 4. Fantastic combination. Now, I've, I know you've talked about those in terms of clearing the gui, working with the shen, and what about today, to wake up the, the qi flow, help clear well, the Yeah, line. it does many things. It moves qi, moves blood, it stimulates, it tonifies the kidneys, mm -hmm. the yuan qi. Mm -hmm. And remember, I keep saying, the dume goes through the brain, therefore the shen. Yes. Because inside, from, from here, from do 16, it goes inside. Uh, the brain. And then it goes on the top too, like, you know, do Well, there are points here, yeah, of course, there are points here which influence the do inside. Do, does it radiate inside, like, you know? No, you that's the, the uh, what you call the, uh, the inner pathway of the channel. Every channel has an inner pathway. Yes. You know, the liver channel goes through the lungs, yeah, for yes. example. Yeah. The do channel from do 16 goes inside the brain. So then, if you're talking about, you know, some of your favorite combinations, do 24, REN 15, and REN 4, and REN 4, 
that could be a really good combination for infertility, for example. Yes, yes. Yeah, and infertility, I would always use Renfro practically yeah. in a woman, yeah. oh, well, in a man too. Practically always use Renfro. Yeah. Renfro, by the way, I've forgotten that now, but it has something like 30 names. It does? You know the acupuncture points that we use, that we know, yes. at Herku, for example. Yes. At nearly every point has alternative names. I know there are alternative um, translations. I didn't no, know no, they actually alternative had... names. I didn't know that. Guan Yuan Renfo has got something like 30 names. The Room of Jing, or mm -hmm. Fertility Door, or something like that. So these are all really important names that give us clues as to the power of that point that taps into that very dynamic, vibrant midline that we're exploring today. Yeah. And yeah. Renfo is, is a dual function. It kind of can stimulate the rising of the energy that you were talking about, mm -hmm. but also stabilize the chi here mm -hmm. in the dantian, which is where it should be. So it's, it kind of focuses and... and it stabilizes, stabilizes it, it roots it. It roots it. So, so REN4 is a very rooting point. Yes, thing. very much so. REN4 by itself mm -hmm. even comes to mind by rooting chi there the mind even by itself. Yeah, so really important. And and also it, it connects us back with our roots, doesn't it? I call it like an ancestral point. Well it is connected with do four at the back. With do four directly. Do four yes. directly. Yeah. So would you if we followed up with that, would it go back into connecting us with our ancestors? Yes, very much so. Yeah. Very much so. So these are really powerful points that we're talking about. Very powerful. It also treats the constitution. Let's right? suppose you have a, I don't know, a constitution hereditary problem. For example, asthma, allergic asthma, is runs in families. You're much, much more likely to get allergic asthma if your parents have it, or aunt, or an uncle, or grandfather. That's yeah. a fact in, in yes. Chinese medicine. That's a fact. Yes. The Chinese medicine really goes back into the epigenetics. And then fall treat that, you know. Yeah, it would be perfect. Treat that. So, what we're exploring is how Chinese medicine is goes way beyond just some simple points where you're teaching, treating symptomatic conditions. That there are layers and layers within the meridians and the mm -hmm. points that go so deep. And just like in the biodynamic cranial cycle, when you're aware of this midline and you're aware of the layers that it treats, you're able to help your, your patients much more profoundly, and, and just what you're talking about, there are so many layers. And when you're treating something like that, a disease that is clearly you know, in your DNA, hereditary, you, you have to use some extra meridians. You yeah. have to. Yeah. You can't treat it only with the main channels. And those, those extra meridians, mostly those that, that are, treat your constitution. That treat your constitution. The yin chan and yang chan, for example, do not. They're more the osteopathic, biomechanical. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can say that. But there are more than that, but you can say yeah. that. But so tell me more about these deeper, more profound three of them. And, and I know that we're, we're trying to keep this to a very short... Um, well, deeper, more section. profound means they treat the jing. They and treat the jing. Your constitution and any hereditary diseases that you might have, like allergic... So, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Why would you... I know you don't translate the jing, but how would you describe the jing to... Uh, say to the novice. <laughs> That's a big question. Uh, it's a huge question and only the master can answer it. I know I can't. So It's the essence. In my books I translate Jing as essence. As essence. I said in my lectures, I do yes. not. Yeah, you and I prefer to use the word Jing. Yes. It's basically our hereditary constitution, our DNA. And our DNA, but, but there's a dynamism to it. There's an there's alignment a dynamism to it. and yes. a force to it. It's yeah. like that. It's not doesn't just sit there in the lower hand yen, it <laughs> no. participates in all the physiological functions of the body. And we can influence it through our acupuncture points or herbs. So we can influence it, which is good because... Only certain points influence it, like for no. example, her cool would not. No, so which are the, the, the Well, the ren points, special. very much the ren and the do points. The ren and the, the, the do and the chung and points. Chung. These yeah. three. So those are the key points. The key points. Ren 4, I would single out mm -hmm. for the Ren Mei. 
do four, I would sing aloud for the do mm -hmm. and kidney thirteen, I would sing aloud for the do uh, for the chumay. Kidney thirteen. So that's that's an unusual one. That's not yes. one isn't commonly used. For it should be. It should be. It's right next to ren four. Yeah. It's so right next, half it soon from ren four. Kidney thirteen. Yeah. Great. Great. Kidney thirteen nourishes jing and yuan chi and roots, the chung mei and the ren mei. By the way, guan yuan, the ren four, is obviously a ren mei point, mm -hmm. but the chung mei also goes there. That's another reason for this point being so important. Yes. Because it would root not only the ren mei, but also the chung mei. The chung mei goes to ren four. So what you're talking about, I would think would be profoundly important in our busy, crazy, chaotic oh, um, yeah, lives that. today is rooting and grounding and and if you think of kids with ADD for oh, example yeah, very much so. really important points to just help them root and ground and combined um, with certain domain points combined with certain points here yeah, yeah very much so fantastic Giovanni and the Du Ren and Chung all three of them treat the Shen because they all three of them go through the heart Mm -hmm. And all three of them, and the Dume goes through the brain. Yeah. So all three of them influence the Shen. So that Shen, you know, when you go and have an acupuncture treatment and you work with someone good, you can help your Shen start to glow and illuminate your whole face and being. Is that right? Mm -hmm. At the same time, you're supporting that midline and getting nice and strong and clear. And this way, we're going to have. Clearer, healthier people on the planet, is that right? Yes. Yes, Hopefully. and it's not so hard. Yeah. Great. Anything else you'd like to come No, thank you very to? much, Susan, for your uh, insightful questions. Well, this thank was you. fascinating as always and to be continued. I know I'll come up with another question very soon. <laughs> so thank you so much, Giovanni. Thank you. Really thank you. appreciate it. Meridianholistichealth.com